This Bendix radio has such a nice open chassis. I thought I'd go through how I tested all the coils in this radio. Now the first thing to do is to take a look at how these tube sockets, the pins on the tube sockets, count. And here I've marked the keys on three of the tube sockets. And the way these count is the pin on the right of the key is pin 1 and the pin on the left side is 8. So it's going to be very easy to count the pins on these nice big tube sockets. Here's the wiring diagram I'm going to be using. And it's a typical AA5 configuration. I take a little closer look at the coils. I'm going to be testing the IF cans, the first and second IF, and also the oscillator coil. And the first thing I tested was the first IF primary. Now we can see that pin 3 of the 12SA7 is connected to one side of the primary and the other is connected to that line up above and you can see that if we go over to the left we could go to pin 4 of the same tube and test it. But I didn't do that. I went all the way over to the right and then down and we could test it at the 50L6 but I continued on and I decided to test it at the power supply. And at the power supply R11 is 2200 ohms. So that's red, red, red. Okay, I've got the ohmmeter connected to both those two points and it reads 26.5 ohms. Here's a closer look at that socket so you can see that I do have it on pin 3. Now here's the other connection. Kind of hard to see there. But if I were to move that black lead over to the next socket over, that is the 50L6 tube socket on pin 4, we would get the same reading. Now the next coil I want to check is the secondary of the first IF. And looking at the wiring diagram we can see that one end goes to one side of a 3.3 meg resistor and the other goes to pin 4 of the next tube over the 12 SK7. Okay, and here is a picture of that connection. You can see the resistor that's orange, orange, green. That is the 3.3 meg resistor. But we also have a reading on the meter of 24 ohms. Now I've got another shot of that connection and you can see the tube socket and you can see that I've got a I got it connected to pin 4. Next I decided to check out the 
oscillator coil and back on the 12SA7 pin 6 is one connection for L2 and the other one goes to a dot 0 0.5 microfarad capacitor and so does the other coil of the oscillator. So we got a 50-50 chance and when I got it hooked up correctly it read 2.1 ohms. Now on the diagram it only reads dot 5 so I'm not quite sure if the diagram is that accurate on it. If there was a problem uh, this coil would be open not reading very low ohms chances are anyway. And here I moved the alligator clip out of the way so we could get a much better look at that tube socket and you can see that I do have it on pin 6. Now the next one's easy. It's just the other two leads coming out of the coil that we didn't hook up yet. And here's a picture of that connection and it reads 7.2 ohms. Here's a much closer look at that connection. Okay, the next coil that I tested was the primary of the second IF and we're back to the 12 SK7 this time on pin 8 and I went back to the other uh, connection on the power supply and here is a picture of that connection and it reads 21 dot 9 ohms. Much closer look at that and you can see that it's on pin 8. Now for the secondary of the second IF can and on the 12 SQ7 pin 4 is one side of that coil and the other side of that coil is connected to the 3.3 meg resistor and also look where else it goes on the right side it goes to the high side of the volume control so here's a picture of that connection and it reads 22.5 ohms a much closer look at that connection. So that means at this point all the coils, the oscillator coils and the IF coils are good. Now it's time to test the audio coils which is the audio output transformer and I want to test the primary of that coil or that transformer and we've got a connection at pin 3 of the 50L6 and the other is a red lead that goes down to the power supply and then when I got down here and started looking I go hmm uh, it looks to me like I was using the wrong diagram. I checked the electrolytic capacitor and I only have two inside that electrolytic can or cord board and this shows three so this is an option that improves the filtration in the power supply and I only have two 
microfarad capacitors and this shows three so we do not have this option we have this one now both are almost identical but this is the one that I should have used now it doesn't matter for testing the coils but when I continue on with this I will be using uh, in the other videos this diagram so I connected up my meter to those two points and it read 164 ohms here's a much closer look at that connection and if you look on the right here are the two leads coming from the primary of that transformer red lead on the top blue lead on the bottom and you can see where they go in this picture so here are the results so far of all the coils that I've tested and the only ones left is the secondary of the audio output and the speaker itself up here in the upper right hand corner so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the place where I had the ohmmeter hooked up and I am going to hook up a 9 volt battery to this and see if I can't hear some clicking as we heard in the video clear clicking so that means that the secondary of the audio output and the speaker coil are good so now I'll continue with the cleanup and replacing the capacitors of this radio now that I know that all the coils are good thanks for watching